Hello, welcome to Financial Freedom Through Stewardship, sponsored by the Victorville First Assembly of God in Victorville, California. And uh, my name is Tom Ben Norman, and I'm your host. And what we're going to try to do today is we're going to be talking about financial freedom. These classes, we're going to have several classes, are intended to help participants become aware of how God wants us to handle our money and to achieve financial freedom. There's a lot of blessings, many blessings that we can receive from God if we handle finances the way God wants us to handle them. And we're going to talk about that. There's over 2,500 verses in the Bible that talk about money. That's more than love, joy, peace combined. What's that tell you? That tells you that God really, really cares about how we handle money. And he really does love us and he really wants us to prosper and to do well. But he wants us to do it his way. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy. We ask you, Lord, to bless our class. We ask you, Lord, to help us to learn and grow and be good stewards for you. Guide us through every scripture guide us through every thing that we do today and through all these classes we praise you and thank you for it in jesus name amen amen well financial problems don't happen overnight no it takes time a lot of time okay and it takes a long long time to solve them <clears throat> a lot of time it takes determination it takes drive you have to want to do it. You really got to want to do it. It's hard. But it's achievable. And you can do it. We can all do it. It's really a good thing to do. To achieve financial peace, sometimes we got to do without. A lot of times we got to do without. And we got to make some very difficult decisions that are very hard to do very hard to make those decisions but i tell you it's worth it in the end it is worth it and we're going to be discussing some topics topics as this stewardship cash flow planning and that word that people do not like to hear and that's the word budget we're going to be talking about budgeting we're going to talk about debt, being a slave to debt. Talk about getting out of debt, using the debt snowball, and even using the debt avalanche. We'll explain those. We're talking about giving, saving, investing. Talk about insurance. What's, what's insurance got to do with finance? We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about what financial independence really really means what does financial independence really really mean there will be homework and it's essential that you complete the homework assignments that way you can get the most you can out of the class the homework's not intended to be difficult however when you Dealing with your own personal finances, you might find that you have to make some very difficult and heart-wrenching decisions. That's just the way it is with finances. Questions are encouraged in the class. Please feel free to email your questions. <clears throat> email them to finfree, S-T, now it's F-I-N-F-R-E-E-S-T at gmail.com. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. If I don't have an answer, I'll tell you. <clears throat> but please remember one thing. I am not a certified financial counselor. And I'm not going to answer. I won't be able to answer all questions. I don't have the answers. All the answers. But I will attempt to give advice. 
but I will not give advice on such topics as what kind of stocks you want me to buy, that kind of thing. I'm not a stockbroker. I'm not, I don't know that stuff. I don't want to know that stuff. But reliance on prayer. We're going to be pr relying on prayer. <clears throat> Communication with God is going to be emphasized in all these class sessions. God's will is our main focus. And we must involve him in all decisions, not in just our financial decisions, but in all of our decisions. But we're talking financial here, so we need to involve him in our finances, in our financial decisions. And next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Financial concepts are rather simple. But it's not just about math. It's mostly about a word called behavior. Behavior, okay? Personal finance is 20% head knowledge, 80% behavior. Behavior is the key to financial freedom. Your behavior, my, you know, our behavior is the key. Dedi takes discipline, takes dedication, it takes determination and drive. Our behavior must be such that we can achieve financial freedom by doing the things that God wants us to do. And it takes a want to, you have to want to do it. That's all there is to it. So you got to learn to control your money. Otherwise, it will control you. If you don't make a plan for your money, someone else will. Now, you can guess who that might be. That's going to be people like Visa, MasterCard. It's going to be people like store financial schemes that do nothing but cause debt. Is that what you want? I don't think so. Here's a current example of why we need a plan. Right now, we're faced with the virtual shutdown of the economy. A lot of people are out of work. A lot of people have their hours cut back. The government has decided to give us taxpayers a $1,200 stimulus check. What should we do with that check? What should we do with that money? Spend it on stuff that we normally couldn't afford, but oh, we want it. Use it to pay down debt. Buy groceries, pay our rent, pay our mortgage, pay our utilities, donate it, or just save it. These are all decisions that we have to make, and we have to have a plan to do that. The government intended that stimulus check to be used to replace lost wages. Meaning to pay the rent, to pay the mortgage, pay your utilities, pay for groceries, that kind of thing. Whatever it is that your paycheck would normally be used for. Whatever you would normally spend your regular paycheck on. It's not intended to be frivolously spent on our wants, but on our needs. That's where it was intended to be spent, for our needs. We should have a plan to tell us how this stimulus money should be spent. we got to have a plan. Without a plan, our money just grows wings and flies away. This is just one example. We need the plan for all our money. So, let's talk about planning. We need step-by-step -step instructions. That's a roadmap to winning with money. Dave Ramsey. Now, Dave Ramsey is one of the most foremost authority in money management, and this is what he recommends. He has the following baby steps. <clears throat> I want to talk about each one for a minute. Baby step one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Put $1,000 into a beginner emergency fund. This has to be top priority. Okay. It's the most difficult step because it requires a change. A change in what? A change in behavior. Okay. 
we have to be willing to change our behavior. If we do not change, nothing else will either. Okay? This $1,000 must be a priority. Save it as quickly as possible. Maybe use the stimulus money that we talked about earlier. Because emergencies will happen. You can count on it. So we need to plan for emergencies as well as anything else. So what is an emergency? Uh, something like your car broke down. An appliance went kaput. Okay. A water leak in the house. Well, that can be expensive. Or any other major things that are unexpected and cost money. A great sale at Kohl's. Is that an emergency? No. No. Sometimes we just have to forego bargains. And some pleasures. If we want to get ourselves, our finances in order. Baby step two. Pay off all debt using this debt, debt snowball. And we're going to be talking about that too. The baby step three. Increase your emergency fund to three to six months expenses. Now, this is expenses, not income. What are your expenses for three to six months? Okay. Don't mix your emergency fund with your regular money because it'll disappear. It'll just be gone. It needs to be liquid. And you need to be able to get to it fast. Okay? A money market account with check writing privileges, that's a good thing to do. But remember, your emergency fund is not an investment. It is insurance. It costs you money because you're putting the first thousand dollars aside because you know you're going to end up having to spend it. And then you're going to do three to six months after you get your debts paid. Everything except the mortgage. Because you know you're going to have to spend it. Emergencies will occur. Baby step four, beginning investing for retirement. You think Social Security is going to be sufficient for you? I doubt it. It isn't for most people. Baby step five, if this is applicable to you, begin saving for a college fund. Student loans are really crippling our young people today. Colleges cost ooh, thousands of dollars. And it's really hurting our young people. So we want to try as much as we can to help our kids with that. Baby step six. Pay off your home mortgage. Become debt free. That is a key to become debt free. Baby step seven. Build wealth so that you can give generously. And live without worrying about any kind of money problems. Normal, according to Dave Ramsey, normal in North America is broke. Broke. Normal is living on the razor's edge with credit card payments, car payments, spending more than you make. Becoming in debt all the time. Any unexpected emergency can throw us into some kind of a panic. We don't need that. Think about it. Wealth building. If you want to build wealth, if you want to get your finances where you can manage them easy. As I said at the beginning of this lesson, it takes a long time. It is a marathon. It is not a sprint. There's no quick fix. It takes work. It takes determination. It takes a lot <clears throat> of effort. There are no shortcuts. 
There are no shortcuts. And as Dave Ramsey says, if you live like no one else, later you can live like no one else. What that means is sacrifice now in order to prosper later. I hope these classes will help you make the changes that are needed to achieve financial freedom. I really do. Your homework for this next week, because we're going to be talking about stewardship and what that means and what God expects of us in that regard. Our homework is to read Matthew 25, 14 to 30. That's the parable of the talents. And ask yourself, what is a steward? And what makes a good steward? These two questions. What is a steward? And what makes a good steward? Be sure to turn in, tune in next at the next installment of Financial Freedom Through Stewardship next week at the same time on Facebook and on YouTube. We're sponsored by Victorville, First Assembly of God in Victorville, California. But if you want to donate to VFA, Victorville First Assembly, <clears throat> you may send your donations in any of the following ways. You can do it by push pay. You'll have to call the church office probably to find out how to do that. And that number is 760-243-4343. Or visit vfassembly.org. Click on the three lines up in the upper right-hand corner and choose Save, and you can donate there. Or you can just mail your donation to Victorville First Assembly of God, 15260 Nisqually, N-I-S-Q-U-A-L-L-I Road. That's in Victorville, California, 92345. Now, remember, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, feel free to email me at finfreest. Now, that's F-I-N-F-R-E-E-S-T at gmail.com. We are going to be using some forms with our homework assignments, so I need to send them to you. So I'm going to need to have your email address, and I'd like to have your name and the city that you're living in included in the email. Kind of like to know who I'm talking to. So I'd like to close in prayer and ask the Lord to just bless the daylight side of you and let him do a work in all of us. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for this class. We thank you, Lord, for the ones that are listening and ask you, Lord, to let this thing go out. Let it go out and really help people get their finances in order. Help us, oh Lord Jesus, to do things the way you want them done. Guide us, use us, direct us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Till next time, Good night.